What do you do when you buy fresh produce from the store? You take it home and put it in your refrigerator. Then it stays fresh for a week, maybe a week and a half more, and you don't have to eat an entire head of lettuce in one day. My name is Max Burns. I'm an undergraduate researcher at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, and my research is focused on combating post-harvest food spoilage due to the very dilemma that I just mentioned. For many people in rural off-grid communities and developing nations, there is obviously no refrigerator, no way to keep produce fresh for more than a few days. Instead, food goes to waste due to post-harvest food spoilage. This also forces community members to walk long distances to markets for fresh produce and limits access to fresh and healthy vegetables and leafy greens. So the focus of my research is clay pot evaporative coolers, which are small scale devices used to extend the shelf life of produce by around five to seven days. These systems can be assembled easily using materials that are sourced locally, and there's no need for centralized distribution of anything but the knowledge of how to construct them. And as you can see, the system itself consists of an internal and external pot separated by a layer of sand, which is saturated with water. A wet cloth is then placed on top, and the system cools produce placed inside the inner pot. But there are pots of all shapes and sizes available. So how do community members know which uh, to use when constructing these systems? This is the problem that my work intends to shed light on. There is no current literature detailing the effects of different clay pot uh, cooler configurations. So my research aims to investigate the effects of different geometries on uh, cooling, water efficiency, and accessibility of materials. So these were the six systems which I examined in my work. You can see the dimensions below the images on the left side of this slide. I tested three pot and pot coolers and three pot and dish coolers to compare the efficacy of the different systems. The only thing that I uh, vary in this experiment is the size of the outer pot. This is the first in a series of experiments and a great first step is to establish the difference made by the outer surface. And to collect data for this experiment, I used an Arduino Mega to store data from 10 environmental sensors and 12 temperature probes uh, to reach humidity and temperature on the inside and outside of each clay pot system. Each pot also had a load cell below it to measure the amount of water evaporated over time. And on this slide, you can see the analysis of the collected data. The top graph is a measure of water evaporated over time. The bottom left indicates the cumulative cooling effect measured in Celsius hours. And the bottom right shows the instantaneous temperature uh, difference between the interior and exterior of each system. Now I know these graphs are a lot to take in, so I want to break it down. In studying the pot and pot systems, it became clear that larger pots were less efficient in terms of water. I expect that this is because in smaller systems, each gram of water that evaporates has a comparatively greater effect um, on the interior pot, because thermal energy is not wasted on cooling the sand gap. Although the, they are less uh, water efficient, larger outer pots um, have a much uh, longer lasting cooling effect than their smaller counterparts, which is very apparent in, um, in this chart of Celsius hours over time. When it comes to dishes, uh, the results are noticeably different uh, because the dish's wall height has a much more dramatic effect uh, than the, the variations in their diameters because that's what um, denotes their volume. So in system two, the plastic dish, um, you can see that it performed exceptionally well in general which I believe is related to its material more so than its geometry. Because it's similar to System 4 in shape, but it produces a drastically different result. System 5 performed relatively poorly, which is largely due to its low capacity for water and its very poor sand contact with the inner pot. So here are the three highest capacity systems, uh, 1, 2, and 6, were interesting because of the great difference in efficiency between System 2 and Systems 1 and 6. Two was much more efficient in terms of um, water to temperature change, which suggests that a plastic outer pot or dish might be a surprisingly effective assembly style. And now zooming in on the initial cooling effect, we can see that the systems which have a longer effective cooling time, like one and six, the larger pots, have uh, relatively poor initial cooling effects when compared to three and four, which um, were either a pot and dish or were a much thinner pot and pot. This suggests that there is some form of trade-off between initial magnitude of cooling and the amount of time needed before a refill. So based on the interesting uh, differences between initial and long-term cooling, I'm currently investigating the effects of filling each system every two days to keep them constantly saturated. I think that this is closer to an actual use case as you would see um, in the rural regions and developing nations that we are uh, studying in this project. I also plan to further investigate the different geometries because um, that work is not done yet um, and the effects that different outer pot materials have on cooling. And that stems from the very interesting effects of that plastic um, pot versus the um, ceramic pots. And I just want to take a moment to thank Eric Verplogen 
who is my faculty advisor and mentor for this project, uh, Trang Lu, a former student who my work um, is largely inspired by, um, and IEEE for sponsoring this conference. 